Hi everybody, this is Anne. Jim and I recently visited Daryl Adams Pottery in Gainesville, Florida, where we were impressed by his gorgeous wood-fired pieces. I actually purchased one of his sculpted pieces, which got me thinking, we really haven't done any videos exploring sculpting techniques. I thought it'd be fun to design a beginner project for those who want to practice one way to model a face. In this video, I'll demonstrate a hand-building project utilizing additive sculpting processes to create a face basket wall hanger. The first step is to roll a quarter inch slab between two quarter inch thick rulers. I use my red rib to compress and smooth it on both sides. For this project, I'm using a styrofoam hollow half sphere. You can find different sizes from the link in the description. I needed the slab big enough to fit over the mold, so I placed it on the slab and cut about two inches out from the perimeter of the sphere. I placed a sheet of plastic wrap over the styrofoam so the clay wouldn't stick. I gently placed the slab over the mold, pressing down slowly so the clay didn't bend too severely or fold over itself. I made sure that I didn't stretch the clay too thinly as I worked. Around the bottom, I pushed the excess clay inward so the clay made tight contact with the foot of the mold. I used my needle tool to cut the excess clay about an eighth of an inch away from the rim, all the way around. Using my finger, I worked that eighth of an inch against the rim, which will compress and reinforce the foot ring. I used my red rib to smooth and compress the rest of the sphere. Next, I created a template for the opening of the basket. I took a piece of paper and laid it across the top section of the sphere. I measured how far across I wanted the opening to be. Then I marked a point indicating the middle top of the opening. I folded the paper in half so the end points connected. I then used my scissors to connect that top point with the bottom edges to create a half circle. I placed the template over the mold then use the laser level to ensure that the template was in the very center. I drew a line around the template, then removed it. Now you could also just follow that laser line around the mold for a bigger opening. Now that I know where the opening of the basket will be placed, the bottom section will be where I designed the face. I begin by pushing in the clay to mark where the facial features will go. I wet my thumbs and placed them just off to each side of the center, about an inch under the basket opening line. I began to press inward about an inch and a half across, and then downward to create the eyes and nose depressions. It's always a good idea to reference people's faces or even pictures of faces for guidance about various proportions and how the features blend together. In this video, we really aren't trying to make someone's particular face. This is just a beginner's guide to practicing for those who want to learn more about modeling general facial features. I pushed the clay down under where I thought the nose would end. I made one more indentation under where I thought the lips would protrude. Starting with the nose, I rolled a small ball of clay and pinched it into an oval shape. I attached it over the nose area and worked the edges down to blend it in.
I continued to round the nose to the shape that I wanted. I then put more clay under the nose to create the elevated area between the nose and the mouth. I rolled a thin coil for the upper lip. I wanted him to smile, so I wanted a wide coil. I pinched the bottom edge of the clay upward to create a nice lip. I then placed another coil under the top lip and worked it in place using my fingers to shape it. I placed one more wider piece of clay under the bottom lip for the chin and shaped that. I placed a disc of clay beside the nose on each side and worked it in for the cheeks both down towards the lips and then upward into the eye sockets. Before the next step, I defined the eye sockets just a little bit more. I rolled a long coil and flattened it out a bit and attached it for the protruding brow. I placed it above the eye socket and worked it down over the brow and down towards the eyes. I also flattened it down towards the nose to divide the brow. I made two almond shapes and rounded the top of them, then attached them in the eye sockets. I 
I gently work the edges into the clay. I created four very thin strips of clay and attached them over and under each eye for the lids. I worked the edges of the clay gently with a small paintbrush. I added some laugh lines around the mouth by working in a coil curving down from the cheek to the chin. For the eyes, I created very thin discs of clay the same size and attached them to the center of the eye openings. I wanted to make sure the lids were overlapping this. In hindsight, I should have attached that before I attached the eyelids. <laughs> I used the rounded blunt side of my carving tool to push in for an iris. Then I used a small blunt end of a bamboo stick for the center. I added a very small coil over the eyelid for the lashes. I worked in the clay, then used my scoring tool to create the individual hairs. For the back, I rolled out another slab and placed the basket over top of it. I traced around the perimeter, then removed the basket and scored and slipped both edges of the basket and the slab. I took out the styrofoam mold and peeled away the plastic. I carefully attached the basket to the slab as close to the scoring lines as I could. I cut away the excess clay about an eighth of an inch from the basket edge and removed the clay. I then worked that eighth of an inch area of clay in towards the basket to make a tight seal. I also moved the basket to a piece of foam to help the air circulate a little bit. When the piece was leather hard, I used an X-Acto knife to cut away the clay for the opening. I then worked a coil into the interior joint all the way around and then used my fingers to soften the edges of the opening. Finally, I cut a slot in the center back so I'll be able to hang it on the wall. I also placed some clay into the sharp edges of the opening to reinforce that area against cracks. And there he is. I just need to put a loose layer of plastic over him and let him dry slowly before firing. I would love to hear in the comments section your ideas about where you would hang this and what you would place inside of it. Thanks to the newest members of our Little Street Pottery Research Facility team. If you'd like to join the team and earn a title, click on the Super Thanks button or the link to buy me a coffee. It also really helps us out if you hit that like button and subscribe to our channel. See you next time in the studio.